So this is what we made last time by adding the HDR lighting and the textured lighting and the light rays. So make sure to check out that tutorial if you haven't seen it yet. Today we're going to be adding some extra features like motion blur, depth of field and some better materials for the ball and the floor. So let's get started with the motion blur. To add this, make sure you have your node editor open here. You can do that by dragging this down if you didn't have it and then selecting node editor. Now to get the speed information for the motion blur, you need to enable the vector pass by going into the layers section here and under passes, click vector. Now we don't want to edit any materials. We don't want to edit materials. We want to edit layers. So click here, make sure use nodes is selected. Clicking this vector added a speed output from your scene. Now we just want to add a vector blur node, which we do by pressing Shift A, Filter, and Vector Blur. And just dropping it there connects it up between the scene and the compositor output. So all we have to do is connect the Z to Z and the speed to the speed. And now we should have some motion blur in our scene. Let's go into Solid View with Z, select your box, by right clicking and going to the object tab and we just want to change maximum draw type to wire and now if we press zero to go back to our camera we'll be able to see through this box even though it's in solid mode let me just turn on screencast keys so you can see exactly what I'm pressing and there you have it so we want to pick a frame which has some nice blocks falling that are going to be blurred by the motion blur so something over there this should have a lot of motion blur and that'll give us a nice idea of what this looks like so just go back to your render tab give this a, a reasonable number of samples so that it isn't going to take hours to render let's try a hundred and just render this image now and actually to save ourselves even more time let's reduce the resolution to about 50 this is going to massively speed up the rendering. It just means that we can't zoom into the image very much. And now hit render. I'll come back in a few minutes when that's done. And once that's finished rendering, you should already see that these planks that are falling down have been blurred. And that's because of this vector blur node. And you can make this effect more obvious if you want by increasing this blur value. See how they're being blurred even more now? But this is quite a subtle effect. I like to keep it around 1, which is the default value, and that looks fine. So we're going to move on now to adding some depth of field to the scene. We do this by selecting the camera, going into the camera tab, scrolling down, and increasing the size of the radius. But first of all, we have to give the camera something to focus on. And what I usually use is a plank that's towards the front. And this way, as the simulation runs and the plank falls, they'll move towards you and they'll shift the focus of the camera. And that gives a nice effect. So I'm going to select this one and just remember this name. This is going to be different for you, but just remember the name of whatever plank you selected. So this is second layer.3121. Go to your camera and type that in here. So second layer. 3121 and press enter to select it. Now if we increase this, let's say to 1. Let's press Shift Z to preview the render. So this hasn't completely finished rendering, but you can see the background is nice and creamy, that's being blurred, and so are some of these planks that are far away. Even though this one value is quite high and with a lot of scenes it might look too excessive. I think it works here. Let's just see what it looks like on a different frame. And this is going to be once the once the tower has started falling and the focus is now shifted closer to the camera. Yeah, so that exaggerated how strong this effect is. But I like to keep it really strong. Um, but feel free to turn this down if you don't want the tower to be this blurred. 
But as you can see, the focus has moved and now these planks are in focus. So, the next thing we're going to add is a glossy material to the ball. Let's just pick a frame where we can see the ball and the tower and zoom in so that you have a better view of the ball. You can do this by holding down shift and using the middle mouse button to click and zoom with the scroll wheel. Now select the ball, go to the materials tab and at the moment it has a really simple diffuse material. Let's just get rid of this, add a new one, call it glossy ball and we're not going to use a simple glossy material because that can look quite cartoony. It doesn't look very realistic in my opinion. We're going to give it a more plasticky material. So we're going to speed up the preview render by pressing Shift B and making a box around the ball. And now it's only going to render this area of the scene. So let's just see what the default glossy material looks like. It doesn't really look like anything. So I'm going to make it look like plastic, and that is by using the Fresnel node. Let's do that now. In your node editor, go back to the materials of the objects and make sure you've clicked here. Now, we want to change the material of the glossy to pure white, and this way the reflections are going to be pure white, and that's how plastic reflects light. But we want to mix this with a diffuse material, so press Shift A to add a shader, which is diffuse, and just slot it above your glossy material, press shift A again, and under shader, add a mix shader now. Plug them in, so you can plug this one in to where the glossy one is, and that'll push that one down, because you want the diffuse one to be plugged into the first, the first slot in the mix shader. And now we're gonna add the Fresnel node by pressing shift A, input Fresnel, and plugging that in there. So, now you can change the color of the diffuse material. Let's try red or orange. And that's a really simple way to get a more realistic, glossy plastic material. It's slightly out of focus. Let's just see what this would look like if it was in perfect focus. And yeah, that's the material we've created. Nothing fancy, but much better looking, in my opinion, than the standard glossy material. Let's give our scene the depth of field effect again by pressing 1. And now feel free to play with this material, make it whichever color you want. If your ball is quite dark, there are two things you can do. First of all, you can make sure that the brightness of your diffuse color is as bright as possible. But if that's still not enough, you can select the color, go to HSV mode, and turn this value number above 1. So you can actually make the brightness brighter than 1. Now this isn't realistic, but it can help your scene look much better. So, that's a much better material for the ball. So now we're going to give the floor a different material. Let's select another preview render box by pressing Shift B. And this time it should include some planks and some floor. Nothing too fancy. Select the floor. Press Shift Z to preview render. And let's get rid of the material. In the last tutorial, we gave it the same material as the ball, but that's going to be confusing now. So let's give it a material called Floor. And this one's going to be much simpler. It's going to be a simple diffuse material, but we're going to make it darker. So let's just see what the whole scene looks like now. We're going to get rid of this preview box by pressing shift B and selecting the whole viewport. Go back to your render tab and tick border and now it's rendering the whole viewport again. So we're going to press shift Z to see what this looks like. I'll do this in full screen mode by pressing shift space just to give us a better view. Awesome, that's it for today's tutorial. Let's just see what this looks like so far. I'm going to increase the resolution again so we get a better idea of what this looks like and I'll come back in a few minutes when this is finished. I hope you found that useful. Make sure to tune in next time where I'll cover everything to do with rendering from how to improve render time and how to post-process 
after rendering all within Blender. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that, and let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. Thanks for watching.